The influence he had on music has lasted for decades. Chef is one of those guys that is transcendent of any artistic category. He touched the lives of some of rock's biggest stars. He was the man in the 70s, I mean, what well, should I say, he was the chef. Yet he never recorded an album. He never even cashed a royalty check. He was just one of the one of the greatest, coolest guys around, you know. It's unbelievable what Chef's done for me. And just when he'd settled into an idyllic life of steam table days and steamy nights, the music world had one more surprise for Chef. Uh-oh. Tonight, the triumph, the tragedy, the tuna casserole of Chef, as Comedy Central takes you behind the menu. Chef is totally a ladies' man. Large, humble, understanding, phenomenal, compassionate, inspiring, great, special, and magical. That's Chef. <laughs> In the world of rock and roll, Jerome Chef McElroy gained fame through his Salisbury steak and sensuous song stylings. His cooking and singing gave inspiration to most of the 70s best known rock acts. After turning his apron on the concert scene, he lived a quiet life in a small Colorado town until, seeking recognition for the theft of a song he had written 20 years before, he found himself on the losing end of a pricey lawsuit. In this, his darkest hour, the rock world he spent a lifetime feeding would join together for Chef Aid, a tribute to an old friend. This is Chef's story, told through the memories of those who knew him best, and the chef himself. Shoot, I was never popular. I never sold a million records either. I just made a lot of other people popular. It brings tears to my eyes when I think about it, how much Chef has influenced me. I mean, he's the number one influence on everything we've ever done. From a meatloaf to a flea, Chef's influence was legendary. I was a 155-pound folk singer. Um, and uh, really just kind of going nowhere, I was doing uh, covers of Peter, Paul, and Mary. He basically started my entire music career. So Chef was cooking his famous meatloaf. And he set it down in front of me and he said, I want you to eat this, I want you to gain weight. And I started eating it and he goes, that's it. You gain weight, we'll call you meatloaf. That's right. I first met Chef in the summer of 1975. I got a gig as a roadie on the Fog Hat Fool for the City Tour. Chef provided the touring rock stars with a hot meal and often something more substantial. On the road, Chef was our, um, our chef. <laughs> Indirectly, we all tried to emulate him. Personally, I never purposely thought, oh, I'll try and emulate that part of Chef, but because it was too obvious, you know. Years ago, back when I was living in Mississippi and uh, Chef was living in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, he played piano also. He helped me write the first rock and roll record, History Rock in 88. He used to have great ideas, man. You and me and her simultaneous you and me and you and you simultaneous love and baby two or three <laughs> i used to follow his uh, pelvic thrusts as a kind of like a metronome and he put the role in rock and roll everything i've ever done has pretty much been a direct theft of chef's genius the all the stuff you hear me do came off chef's the tape I think that's illegal. Chef helped name many bands, and or rename them, actually, you know. I mean, they all start out with names. Not like he's, not like, hey, you got no name. <laughs> they just, you know. I totally remember thing was his idea. First of all, we started, we're sort of stumbling around. We were originally called Tony Flo and the Miraculously Majestic Masters of Mayhem. And Chef uh, came in one day, and we were playing. He was like, hey, you boys, I'm out. He just told you, I'm out here in the back cooking uh, with red hot chili peppers. And we were like, what a great idea for a band name. He, he digs on the food names, you know. He did hot tuna, <laughs> you know. He just named them after a dish. <laughs> hot tuna. <laughs> I actually wanted to call them hot tuna with peas. <laughs> they just went hot tuna, cut off the peas part. It's easier on a marquee, you know what I mean? It's funny because Joe had told me a similar story about how the Clash got their name. Chef came in. And he looked at us and everybody was wearing like crimson and mauve and lime yellow. And he went, oh, you guys, your clothes, they just clash. And that's the moment that we said, we're not going to be the gentlemen anymore. We're going to be the clash. And from that moment on, everything changed for us. 
just chef, man. Chef just had this, this, this vibe, you know. Just being able to like to tap into chef's idea of what art is, you know, it was, it was as close to close to God as I've ever been. He really make my music sound real good, and he don't even know it. Thank you, chef. I love you. Well, chef's influences are, uh, you know, uncountable, really. I mean, music was just absolutely kick-ass, man. I tend to, to hum, uh, chef's music in my head quite often. While no official recordings were ever made of chef's music, bootlegs of his legendary sound do exist. First time I heard chef was on a bootleg of Love Gravy. Expressing love so sweet. I mean, this boot was passed around from engineer to engineer for like two decades, man. You know, they laid it down on reel to reel, all right, and then they, they pressed it to vinyl, they pulled it back down onto an eight track, then a cassette, then a CD, and now it's been remastered to that. Oh! Somebody was in my car one day and they had a chef tape. They put it in, and I said, what the hell is this? And, uh, you know, it was... It was it was a chef. Like all true masters, he's always been slightly ahead of his time, so people haven't really understood his, his complexities until, until years later. From punk to metal, the 80s changed the music scene. You know, back when me and the guys from Twisted Sister were starting out, there was this guy around the scene, Chef, and he was such an inspiration to us and our music. We drew so much, we took so much from him. He got us pointed in the right direction and then he just disappeared. Well, I was moving on up in the business, you know, when along came that twisted sister crap and I just went on and quit the music business. I'm glad he quit. I'm glad he quit though. I'm glad he quit the music because he gave us all a chance I mean, because we had no chance before. Chef, where are you? I, we're waiting for you to come back. A disillusioned chef headed west. I was heading to Las Vegas to work at Circus Circus at the all-you-can-eat buffet. Sadly, a career under the buffet big top was not to be. My car ran out of gas in South Park. Well, I took a job to earn some gas money, and after a while, I kind of liked it, and I decided to stay. For years, Chef lived a quiet, small-town life, until one day, his world was shattered. I can't bear to see that. We got a fax from Elton, Elton John, and uh, he told us of, uh, of Chef's problems. It was such a painful day that day. So immediately we, uh, we helicoptered back to the coast and, uh, and uh, contacted Chef immediately. Chef's problems began when he heard his old music on a new hit record. Recognizing each note as his own, Chef didn't demand cold hard cash. He only wanted his props. So many songs seem to sound familiar. There are only so many notes to go around. They're not inventing new ones. <laughs> I was completely repulsed that, that the industry would have such disrespect for such a great, great figure. Charged with harassing capitalist records, the lawsuit against Chef was devastating. The judgment, which was in excess of $2 million, made an absolute mockery of our judicial system. Well, when we found out that Chef was having a legal problem, we were just uh, sickened, shocked, <laughs> and stunned. This was not a case about one chef in one small Colorado town, all right? This was a case that represented we as a people, the Americans as a unit, liberty, justice, the freedom to do what we want to do, sing if we want to sing, not sing if we don't want to sing, cook, not cook. This is why I went into Paralaw in the first place. Mr. Chef, you've been found guilty of harassing a major record label. The full fee of $2 million will be handed over within 24 hours. They came from all corners of the music world in this chef's hour of need. Did you know some of the biggest stars in the music world gathered in South Park to help an old friend? Yes. They put on a benefit concert to be made into an album called Chef Aid. I heard the chef was thrilled when all his rock pals showed up to help him. He said it's the most fun he's had since Katie Couric. And you know, she loves his Salisbury steak too. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's going, I know he's going through hard times right now. We're doing this chef aid thing for him. Being part of chef aid really, uh, you know, signifies what what the '90s are about. You know, it's a it's a it's a group of people coming together to you know to support a common goal. I'm going to do it. I'm definitely going to do it because you know anything I can do to help this man out. You know, I was one of the first people to get on board for the, on board for the chef aid. You know, when I heard he was having all the financial problems, and so here I am. You know, friends ought to be news, not misused, and I'm here for Chef. Sure.
I got on the horn. I called the most greatest prominent chefs around. We went to farms, we went to chicken coops, we went, we got the green beans, we got it all. We put on the most elaborate spread you could think of. Oh man, I want to tell you something. When, when people first heard that Chef was in trouble, man, they lined up around the block to help him out, man. I mean, it, you know, it's been a real rock and soul reunion, you know. Okay, thanks for coming to Chef Aid, everybody. Are you ready to rock and roll? Chef Aid was recorded for a CD, which will release his stall soon and features a rancid California Sun as sunk banana. Joe Strama. Primus. <laughs> the Crystal Method and Ozzy Osbourne. Many colors in the homo rainbow Don't be afraid to let your colors shine And Elton John Wake up when Smell the coffee I just think it's going to be a fantastically successful album I hope so, you know, for everyone's sake If you used to follow me up now and say, clean my boots, I'll be there, man I'll be, I'll be cleaning his shoes for him, he's the coolest i do anything with the chef, so um, I may even pawn some of my jewelry for him, you know while his music and his meatballs are legendary, Chef's real passion is passion. You know, he had so many amazing women around him. He, you know, he was he was the man of the seventies. Next on Behind the Menu. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offences are considered especially heinous. He would come to me when he didn't get what he wanted from her. I killed him. Don't I need a lawyer or being a peeping tom now just to be trick? I'm fixed on you. Bingo, here he is. Where does he land on the atrocity bell curve? You did the one thing you're supposed to do when somebody threatens you. Survive. Nobody sees what we see. In New York, the detectives who investigate these crimes are known as the Special Victims Unit. Coming soon. This is the amount of work a plumber has to do to afford the McDonald's Quarter Pounder. The McDonald's Quarter Pounder. 99p. The mobile phone is changing. Switch to BT Cellnet's new internet phone and you can email anyone in the world. So now for the same price as an ordinary mobile, you can keep in touch with whoever you want, whenever you want. Surf the net. Surf the BT Cellnet. Physio Sport. Sport on the brain, sport on the body. Always oh, a flap! The vacuum's missing spots! That old broom's stirring up! Swiffer is the new easy to assemble system for dusting floors and home surfaces. Swiffer and the sliding, Swiffer and the gliding. Here comes Swiffer Sweeper! Swiffer cloths remove allergens, and with their honeycomb structure, they are thicker and more attractive to capture more dust and hair. Swiffer cloths are also ideal for dusting by hand. And when they're full up, you just throw them away. The Swiffer way to dust. Right. Buddy. You'd make a wonderful husband. It's only 11 men chasing a stupid ball around. 